Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be reacting to Five recent American Christmas traditions Friends, my name is JJ and for the first time in nearly five years I'm recording this from a brand new apartment I apologize if my new set is not quite as exciting as the old one yet because I have literally just moved in and haven't really had much time to deal with that yet So just be patient with me and I'm sure that in time we will assemble something that looks just as cool as what came before But anyway, today we are going to talk about American Christmas versions So Christmas fits into from... my thesis and now basically every major cultural phenomenon in modern America either comes out of the Victorian age or the first couple of decades after World War II Obviously Christmas as a concept has been around for much longer all the way back to the birth of Christ in fact But when you study the history of grand Christmas celebrations in the sense we know of them today, one of the first things you always learn is just how recent this whole idea is. In many ways, Christmas represented the last major high water point of you know, British culture. You know, I'm fascinated, like how he has this hairstyle and then the hat over it over the U.S. in the sense that it might be the last cultural phenomenon that we can say was more of a British thing embraced by America as opposed to an American thing embraced by England, which would of course be the more common direction going forward with maybe only a few exceptions. When we think of the dominant rituals and aesthetic tropes of American Christmas celebrations like the Christmas trees and wreaths and holly and cooking old-fashioned foods and playing with old-fashioned toys and just the whole sort of backwards looking cottage horror vibe more generally. That's all stuff that was dreamed up by the British Victorians as part of their process of reimagining Christmas as a nostalgic materialist holiday. And this British nostalgic version of Christmas appealed to American sentimentality for their own British heritage, just as the British Victorians had themselves been inspired by sentimentality for their Germanic Anglo-Saxon past. And then, after World War II, America became very rich, which triggered a big explosion in middle-class consumerism, which is to say the selling and buying of stuff to ordinary people that previously only the wealthy could afford. And this resulted in an unprecedented flurry of things like mass-produced Christmas decorations, Christmas foods, Christmas movies, and all the rest. And to some degree, I think you could argue that for the last 60 years or so, we've just been cruising on the legacy of this era, an era that maybe spanned and from It's a Wonderful Life being released in 1946 to the airing of A Year Without a Santa Claus in 1974. So many of our most beloved Christmas goblins originate from this era, like The Grinch and Claymation Rudolph and Charlie Brown, as well as much wow. of the modern American Christmas you know music. Charlie Brown? I know of him, I don't think I ever watched him. Um. Canon, from Silver Bells to Frosty the Snowman. In fact, you could make a pretty good case that recreating the stereotypical post-war Christmas is now becoming as big a source of holiday inspiration and sentimentality as the Victorian one. But anyway, all of this got me thinking, is Christmas still evolving? Whenever I posit my Victorian slash post-war cultural theory, people often note... Is Christmas evolving? Mm -hmm. I know there's like, christmas like wars. <clears throat> Mm. I, honestly, I'm gonna be honest. To me, I I just don't have Christmas vibe living in Miami, so it's, oh. it's just different. I I can't if I I don't know. I, it's it's very different. So, I'm thinking in general, like also in th what I see on TikTok. I don't use TikTok, so mm. I don't know. You know what's popular on TikTok? What? Advent calendars. Now it's a big thing. Like okay, that each was day, a big thing two decades each ago. Day, no, but each day, no, they 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 kind of rate like what the gift is. In each oh. of the company's advent calendar. I don't know. Two decades ago, I always grown up mm. as a kid. We had advent calendars. I don't think that's mm. new. At least be not to me. It's not because new. they say it can be very interesting. Because they say it's worth two hundred dollars. But is it? I don't know. No. But you pay only fifty. Two uh, two hundred dollars for advent calendar. I don't know about that. But. No, it's worth two hundred. But you only pay fifty. Still. But it's a surprise. You don't know what you get. No, advent calendar is a little piece of chocolate for every day. That's what no, it is. No, that's not advent calendar. That's, that's advent calendar. That's, not advent calendar. that's how I understand. Now they put like a little lip gloss. No, it's a piece of a little, a little piece of chocolate mirror. every day you get as a kid. That's it. That's there what we one for toys. Advent calendar toys. We saw at Costco. <laughs> yeah that our current era is about as far from the post-war era as the post-war era was from the Victorian era, which suggests we might be living on the brink of a cultural age that will prove as transformative as those two. But anyway, even if we accept the premise that we've been sort of dining out when your comes to Miami, they created a tradition to go to the clock on the beach <laughs> and stand by and play. Well, yeah, they go on the Lithuanian... No, that's not Christmas, that's New Year's. They go on Lithuanian New Year's. Ah. 
on the post war Christmas nostalgia for quite a while now, are there any signs that artists and entertainers and tradition makers more generally have actually added anything substantial to Christmas over, say, the last 20 years or so? I mean, obviously, people are trying to add stuff. Every I think year, they have. Christmas and now specials. it's frozen. Elsa. She's Christmas vibes, no? Do you want to be the snowman? I think to kind of add, answer this question, you have to have kids. You think so? Yeah, because you no, know, it's like as you just said, Frozen. You know, for it, it, for kids vibes. For me, it's like Home Alone. Like that's what it is, right? But for kids, yeah, nowadays I'm sure Frozen mm -hmm. is a Christmas thing. You know, I'm sure there's newer other stuff too that I'm not familiar mm -hmm. with because I'm because they're because they have like their characters, but Christmas vibes. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think overall Christmas is more for kids than anything. I think no, it's more not. like a kid's holiday I mean for you. To, so I mean, you are a kid, kind of, so it's okay. <laughs> and songs and snacks get released, but basically, we oh. for candy cane can be a pretty uphill battle. The inherently backwards-looking nature of Christmas culture tends to make people now. Maybe how Christmas have evolved. Again, I can't say I wasn't here, but I don't know if you remember, like two decades ago, for example, did you have like every brand come out of like a Christmas? It's just same thing, just change package into Christmas? Mm, was that a thing? I think so, but I think okay. now it's at a higher level. Because now I feel like every single brand just re like replays the package with Christmas. I always remember, yeah. remember M&M's when it's Christmas, it's green and mm, red. Yeah. And my favorite, favorite time is waiting for the Pepsi commercial. Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Coke is Christmas. Christ doing the Christmas with the bear. Yeah, that's cool. And then the one with Hershey's where the kisses do the music bells. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. I always look forward to that. Okay. Well, pretty skeptical of new stuff, but once in a while something does break through. And I think you could make the case that a distinct early 21st century Christmas culture is finally starting to take shape. So today I'm going to tell you oh, a I couple see. of my picks for things that have been added to the American Christmas canon over the last 20 years that I think have proven their staying power to the point where it is not too unrealistic to imagine that they might still be around six decades from now. Okay, first let us talk about Christmas. Would that be Christmas cake? Tree cakes, they come out only during the Christmas time. Yeah, I but that never again. That's but I don't I, remember this one back in the day, to tell you the truth. But then back in the day, I wasn't eating those things. It is the sort of thing your dad forces the entire family to watch on Christmas Eve. What is the most recent, broadly universally recognized as being good Christmas movie released in the 21st century so far? I, I think the answer home. is pretty obvious. It's Elf starring... Yeah, Rachel. I was thinking Elf. Into I was thinking Elf. We watched Elf, I think. No, no we didn't watch Elf. It. It's Home Alone. I don't care what nobody says. He did say 21st century Home Alone is released in the 90s. Our Home Alone um, 4 or something is in the, this century, so it's Home but Alone. But I would take... No, I don't mean Elf. I think Grinch is what I mean with Jim Carrey. That's what... Yes. This one I think is Elf, iconic. I, I think Jim Carrey is more iconic than Will Ferrell. I do. I don't know Elf. Interesting pick, yeah. During Farrell's peak of popularity on Saturday Night Live. Honestly, you should react to like a, a little ranking or some of like Christmas movies. That'd mm -hmm. be interesting. Yeah. Elf was one of the most commercially successful Christmas films ever released up until that point, according to Forbes. You know what I think is also a Christmas reviews. film? I noticed during Christmas time, that's when they play uh, Mrs. Doubtfire a lot. Oh. A lot. From critics, and it has only gotten more popular since IMDb currently ranks it as being one of the top 10 best Christmas movies of all time, and really? it is also the only post 2000 movie to make the top 10. CBS, so when did Jim Carrey come on? Was it great? Did Time Out, among others, all have it in their lists of the top 10. Oh, he's definitely Canadian. That oat is killing me. He's very strong. And best Christmas movies as well. And again, it is always among the newest of movies to be included. So what makes it so great? Well, I think that a big part of the appeal of Elf, which tells the story of a human raised among Santa's elves who was forced to come to the real world where high chase and sue is that it is an excellent example of a style of content that has really come to define modern American Christmas culture, which is meta Christmas, which is to say Christmas content that is very self-aware and even somewhat mocking and sarcastic towards the Christmas content that came before it. Elf is a film that no, drives so much of its humor out. from subverting Which and satirizing the conventions of other Christmas movies to the point where I think it would be a hard movie to even fully get unless you've already seen most of the other great films of the American Christmas canon. But in any case, Elf does the meta style so well and with such a genuine playfulness that it's kind of set the standard <gasps> for this type Mine of Christmas thing ever since. 2000. Mm, so it should be. 
That should count for yeah. something. That should be on It's a top. film that proves it's you can top. be self-aware of Christmas entertainment without being jaded or hostile to the holiday, which I think was a sweet spot that a lot of audiences were looking for in 2003 and ever since. All right, and talking of meta Christmas humor, let me now tell you my nominee for the newest Christmas tradition that I believe has successfully wedged itself into the American really? Christmas canon over the last 20 years, the wearing of the puzzly oh. Christmas sweater. <laughs> These days, if you move- oh. Okay. I don't know how recent that is, but that is a thing, yeah. Mm. Both ugly Christmas sweater, you can find dozens of online retailers selling all manner of sweaters out on the shelf. Particular style with garish, That's flashy colors and awkwardly cliche Christmas uh, imagery. Though these particular shirts are all modern, mass-produced, fast fashion turned out in some Bangladeshi factory somewhere, they're supposed to evoke a style of handmade sweater that reached a kind of cultural peak in America during the 1980s when knitting pattern kits became a very hot item with a particular sort of middle-class uh, housewife. I certainly remember my grandmother constantly buying these pattern sets, asking me what sweater I wanted I mean. it for me next. Dinosaur, Fireman, Ninja Turtles, Christmas-themed ones in particular became very popular things to give to children of this era for Christmas because the sort of people who I'm made these shirts were not exactly like masters of subtlety, as you might have noticed. Anyway, as my generation aged, this style sweater went from being a subject of childhood resentment to wistful nostalgia. It became a symbol of a simpler time, and that time's unintentionally <gasps> hilarious aesthetics. Oh, cute my home town of oh Vancouver. God, I remember. Actually, it was so cute. My mom loved them so much that after we outgrow them as little kids, she gave it to our dogs to wear. Right, right for having the world's first ugly Christmas sweater so party back in 2002, hosted by these two aging millennials who have since authored what purports to be the definitive history of the ugly Christmas sweater backstory. In any case, over the last few decades or so, widespread generational angst at this very particular cultural object has clearly been powerful enough to make the ironic re-embrace of it one of the most viable oh, and Oh, the pajamas. New. Oh, I see like families that go through the matching pajamas mm -hmm. for Christmas. I think that's cute traditions of American Christmas. Intentionally buying and wearing an ugly Christmas sweater is now the go-to outfit for December office parties, holiday photo ops, and even love it. And again, it all gets back to this idea that a lot of the energy animating the creation of new Christmas traditions these days comes from a place of whimsical self-awareness. The idea that Christmas has always been sort of awkward and weird and corny, so why not just embrace it? It's an attitude you can see in a few other relatively modern Christmas traditions as well, like the televised fireplace log, or some of the yes. more deranged Christmas themed snacks, like gravy flavored candy canes or fruitcake flavored candy canes. All right, now how about Christmas decorations? And if you had to name- They made the, they discontinued making this cake and I wish they brought it back. It's this Yule log cake. It was chocolate. So what? Yule log. A, you, you know like the fireplace log? Yeah, yeah. It's called a Yule log cake. It is so tasty. Oh my god. Yum. An object that has become a fairly ubiquitous presence in a lot of American homes around Christmas time. Something that wasn't very common 20 years ago, what? but a lot of families, especially... Decorations. He said, well, I don't know, I feel like decorations were... Unless he's not talking about Christmas tree decorations, he's talking about like stockings and stuff. I don't know the about that. The ones that go outside the house, maybe. But for us, like, growing up, always got Christmas decorations, the lights, even outside mm -hmm. the house. I don't know. So if we had it, obviously we probably got the idea from American Christmas movies, I would mm. think. So it must have been a thing. So. The ones with young children now feel an obligation to buy and display. What would it be? My pick is this thing, the Elf on the Shelf. Yes. So Elf on the Shelf was invented in 2005 by this stay-at-home wife of a high school football coach from What is Elf on the Shelf? Um, it's like an elf and like 12 days before Christmas, this elf is like giving terrors doing all the naughty things around the house so you have to like do cool like tricks with them around the house and your kids think that the elves are doing it but it's not really the elves doing it it's you doing it as a parent it's cool. it, it looks so cool how we do Georgia. this and over the last 17 years her once modest family business has now sold over 11 million of these kits 50 bucks this costs at the bed bath and beyond wow. so let's take a look at how this works so you get this little dolly and this little story that you're supposed to read with the kids and basically what you learn is that the doll spies on the children all day and then goes back to the north pole to tattle to santa about what he's learned and then when the elf comes back the next morning he's in a different part of the house than he was the day before so it's all very exciting to gullible children who think that this proves that he's alive or whatever but i shouldn't be so jaded it is obviously a cute little tradition that a lot of parents have found to be a fun and whimsical way to impose some external discipline on the household yeah i guess when he means decorations he means not like the christmas tree but like 
yeah like the gadgets. I, yeah kind of like the stockings mm-hmm. like elf like that uh yeah i didn't have that i don't know if it was available here or not so maybe yeah during the stressful holiday season but it's also a great example of a relatively modern christmas thing that has penetrated the culture quite deeply given that the wild success of the original kit means that america is now home to elf on the shelf netflix specials and breakfast cereals and freight balloons and board games and oh, happy meals wow. and cocoa pops they even blasted one she made place. money then she's rich she, yeah, she's rich. she has the cereal and everything yeah. weirder rites of passage for demonstrating something to have culturally made it that said the thing that i most wonder about when it comes to the future of Elf on the Shelf is whether the whole rigmarole of buying these original kits and doing the whole elf surveillance routine with your kids is going to continue or whether this elf is just going to evolve into a kind of generic American Christmas stock character. Like if we take... Yeah, I think it will evolve into a character. Yeah. And she's just going to get more paid not of this game anymore but it's like the licensing serials and you know, all that other stuff mm. she licenses that. Grinch, for instance, he has obviously now largely transcended yeah. the... Yeah, like you see her, she's with Grinch. Mm. It's going to be a licensing play. The various Christmas movies that they've made about him, to the point where Grinch movies are now arguably a less important part of American Christmas culture than just the character of the Grinch himself. And so that would probably be my prediction of where Elf on the Shelf will be in like 20 years. A character who will continue to be merchandised up the wazoo and continue to make this lady very rich, even as families gradually lose interest in the $50 Orwellian ritual that started it all. All right, now let us talk about what I think might be the single most standard category of Christmas thing, Christmas music. Now, as we all know, pop stars are constantly trying to make the next big but Christmas music, like even now, like even in the intro, he said the iconic Christmas music is like from that 45 to like 75, whatever mm-hmm. Yeah, like a lot of iconic. So Christmas music been a thing. I don't think that's like recent. But Christmas a new hit. one that becomes like the staple. Yeah, but why would they stop making Christmas music? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's just been a thing and they keep making it because, you know, that's what people do. Because... The idea is he has like the new traditions mm-hmm. that didn't exist before. I just feel like uh, Christmas music existed. Which only makes sense because a lot of the cover to death Christmas songs that we are so familiar with today, like Jingle Bell Rock, Santa Baby, Blue Christmas, or Rock and Ring the Christmas Tree, originally got their start as ordinary radio singles by the trendy musicians of the time. But over the decades, audiences have also become pretty savvy to this, to the point where I would say the public is even somewhat instinctively hostile to modern artists who just throw together some Christmas ditty, expecting it to be an overnight sensation, making them millions of dollars in mall soundtrack royalties. If anything, I think most of the new Christmas pop songs of the last 20 years are best known for being relatively forgettable flashes in the pan, like Justin Bieber's Mistletoe or Lady Gaga's Christmas Tree. Indeed, after pouring over countless Christmas playlists on Spotify, the only relatively contemporary Christmas pop song that seems to have achieved iconic status is Mariah Carey's All I one for Christmas is you, which is getting close to not iconic status is the Christmas song. Like, come on. 30 years old, as the writer of the song himself uh, put it. You feel lucky because it was the last major song to enter that Christmas. I have to say the Michael Bublé song too. Have you so yeah. But it's not original. Oh, uh, okay. No, this canon, and then the door, slam shot. Can you what about Mariah Santa, baby? Is that you mean Ariana? I'm sorry, yeah, Ariana. Yes, simple. Oh. Now, by the fact that I said writer, Cover. not Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas is You isn't even a particularly meaningful song, as far as Christmas pop singles go. The lyrics are pretty insipid, and the guy says that he and Mariah just banged it out in 15 minutes to fill up her 1994 Christmas album, which she didn't even want to make in the first place. It also took a while to fully catch on with the public, which is why I am sort of bending the rules to count it as a recent addition to the Christmas canon, even though That's it nuts. is older than some That's of the money maker. Of today. Music historians generally argue that the song only really took off in the early 2000s, after it appeared in the film Love Actually, and especially after digital music services became mainstream. Slate's Chris Melanthi argues 2005 as the single's breakthrough moment when All I Want For Christmas Is You officially became the most downloaded song of the year. Since then, it has become so widely played on streaming services during the month of December that it is now actually ranked as being one of the most popular songs of all time, if you can believe that. In fact, just last year, Mariah won the Recording Industry Association of America's coveted Diamond Award for a song that has gone platinum 10 times and sold over 10 million units in physical sales and digital streams, something only 92 songs in history have ever achieved. So yeah, I reckon it's not going off the drugstore playlist anytime soon. So in closing, I obviously want to ask you guys for your thoughts. I thought we only got four. I don't know. I didn't mind any Chris, uh, the music, decorations, Christmas Movie, movies, toys, 
Mariah. You didn't talk about food too much. Right. So we had movies, decorations, music. What else was there? Was something else there? Toys. Decorations. That's part of decorations. The elf on the shelf. That was decoration. Maybe candy. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. He said five, it's five. Okay. <laughs> guys, of course, let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord. And as always, as always, share as much kindness as possible.